Right. Now we have to take the back wheel off. So, two things we need, three things we need to loosen off. Um, there is a stabilizer bar there. So this bar goes to the chassis, to the brake backing plate, and this actually holds the brake backing plate still and stops it from spinning when the brakes are applied. Then there's the brake rod itself, which is this guy here. We need to take that off. And finally, we have to take the, um, the axle out or else the, um, the back wheel will not, swipe, um, will not slide off. So there's a split pin on the stabiliser bar. Mine comes off quite easily. And that, of course, just stops that nut from coming all the way off because and that brake back in plate, if that was to ever spin, that would cause real problems. Let me just pull the stabilizer bar off like that. And as always, we put the nut back on. rod. Now my fingers are quite strong so I can apply the brake and then spin the adjuster off. This is how your brakes are adjusted. And people are going to say well why didn't you say that we should mark it so we don't need to adjust them. When you change the chain it will need adjusting anyway. It's inevitable. But it's easy to adjust. And finally, oh, this little gem here, which is the axle nut. This is probably obscured by this exhaust pipe. I'm sorry about that. Now one last thing we're going to do, if you can you, you can see that there's a brake light, brake adjuster there. So we're actually going to loosen those off before we take the wheel right out because it just makes our life easier. And they're very easy to do. Oops. 10 mil and a 12 mil. <laughs> and the same on the other side. Because two adjustments are going to be lost here. One of them is your brake adjustment, as we just discussed. And the other one is your chain adjustment. New chain needs to be adjusted. Okay. other side is just taking the nut right off the axle. I'm going to push that through the axle that is. Don't panic when spaces drop. There's only two. There's one on this side. 
the other side between the brake backing plate and the swing arm and this one here which just tucks into that wheel bearing there we'll leave them there Okay, so what we're going to do now is carefully remove the wheel from the frame and just gently take the brake backing plate out. We should check is that these that everything appears to be identical between them and you can see the different diameter between the 42 and the 45 which is the standard size sprocket I'm going back to standard gearing on this despite the fact that it's uh, it's got a 185 big bore in it uh, for those who are curious it is not the 185 big ball with the remanufactured piston um, it is a it is what we call or what I call a total conversion which involves a crank swap and that crank swap allows me to go everything from 150 up to about 230 cc's and I've got barrels and, and pistons for all of them but 185 is magic it, it's just got the right amount of uh, power and excellent fuel economy so that that's where I've sort of um, that's the point where I've sort of decided to leave the bike at this uh, stage of the game uh, but I want to go back to standard gearing because it absolutely roars up hills <laughs> when you do um, so here we go um, you can it, obviously that fits you can remove the sprocket holder carry our thing quite easily now we don't want to do that because we need to crack these four bolts and this guy is going to probably move around a bit <laughs> Three and lucky last. Now these are nylon, nylon lock nuts, so you're going to have to unscrew them right up to the point where the nylon is clear of the thread before they'll be easy to unscrew.
hopefully, yep, it just comes out. It's still got a bit of life in it, um, but not a great deal. But as I did mention, the, um, the front sprocket is the lowest mileage out of the lot. Yet it seems to be the most worn. These guys on finger tight. stopped it when they when it first goes hard taking all four of them up to that point when it first becomes firm and I, I was actually doing it in sequence you might have noticed going from opposite sides so that one first then that one then that one then that one go absolutely nuts with these. Mm. Nice. So we have a rear sprocket. So pick it back up. And carefully put it into the swing arm. Now once it's in the swing arm, we need to do, get our brake backing plate and then just put it back where it belongs. This is the point where it's going to be the easiest to do that with. Now, back on this side. Get our spacer. Now, if you have a look at the spacer, you can see that that side is sort of not so dirty as that side and that's because it goes in there that's where it was originally inserted and what we're going to do now is just pick the wheel up and get the bolt started 
Now make sure that it doesn't fall out of those rubber cush drives um, with the sprocket. You may have to take it back off and relocate them. Now around on this side, we've got our brake backing plate just sort of dangling there precariously. And the spacer for it. we have those in position make sure you have that lever pointing back down because that's going to go into that Oop. Oop. You might need to give the axle bolt a bit of a tap with a hammer while you do this. Okay, so that, that's actually coming together quite well. Uh, what you need to do is make sure that the adjuster on this side, because this is the side we've been pushing the, the axle bolt through, the left hand side, need to make sure that that is exactly where it's supposed to be inside its slot wow the wheel even turns that's that's a good sign back around to this side now there's your adjuster see how that's got an offset it sort of goes slightly to the left hand side there the one on the other side will be offset like that. This one, however, goes on like that. Once again into its slot. And we put our nut on. And that's our wheel back where it belongs at least. And it turns. Crazy. Now looking at the adjusters, I'm going to back, I've backed that one off for, I'm going to back this one off so this is half a turn at a time, three, four, okay. Stabilizer bar back on. on it. That can happen. The bolts come come out. All you need to do is put it back in. Now there is actually a cutaway for the hex of that bolt, so you can feel it. It's just a question of putting it back into its cutaway. And you'll know it's in the right place because the bolt will stick out far enough. Be 
tightened up. Oh. And the split pin put back, put back in. It's probably a good practice not to recycle split pins as often as I do. Um, you can actually get them from most auto parts stores in a packet for about five bucks. Um, and I actually have a packet of them floating around. I just am too lazy to, to find them. Okay, so that's our stabilizer bar. This guy often falls out. So when you put this rod into the um, lever here, actually goes through that like so and through the hole in the lever so that's just something you need to bear in mind so we're going to put the brake rod back on but we're not going to actually attempt to adjust the brake because that ain't going to work out Started, so there's what we call a full nut. The thread's just sticking out the end. 